Today we're going to have a look at the blend tool. I'm going to start by showing you how the blend tool can work. Then we'll move on to a short project where we make some typography look three-dimensional with some blends. So first off, we have a look over here in our tools panel. You can see the blend tool is here or the shortcut is W. You can also find the blend tool under object blend. The first thing I'd like to show you is how to blend two shapes together. So we'll start with a red square and a red ellipse on the other side of our artboard. I'm going to come up to object first, blend, blend options. Today we'll have a look at specified steps. Between these two objects I'd like three steps. So I can type in three here, click OK, back up to object, blend, make. Now you can see Adobe has made for me an effect on these two objects and blended the shapes. As the square comes over to the circle, it has these three specified steps of the shape changing. If I double click on this, it will actually take me inside the blend. I can see that here because I'm on layer one and inside the blend. And now I can actually move some of these objects around or I can resize them, holding down shift, do that. I can actually come in and move some points, which changes the shapes and changes the blend in between. I can also change the color. So I'm going to come up here and I've got my fill selected and I'll change the fill of this ellipse shape. And as you can see now in between, it's also blended between red to blue and I've got some lovely purples in between. Now as you can see, if I'm trying to click on these shapes in between, I can't select them. That's because they're actually an effect that's been applied to these two other shapes. If I want to be able to manipulate them individually, I can do that, but what I need to do is come up to Object, Expand. And now you can see they are shapes on their own, which I could come in and change. But if I change these or move them around, they don't have any effect now on the other shapes because they're no longer part of a blend, they're part of a group. So I'll just come out back to my artboard and now I'd like to show you how the blend tool can work on a stroke, on a line. So I'll create a line here, I'm going to come to the stroke and give it a black stroke and I'm going to drag it to the other side of my page to copy it, I hold down option and drag and I'm also going to hold down shift so it stays at the same height and this time I will show you using the blend tool over here how we can um, create some steps in between. So double clicking to bring up my blend options. This time I'd like the steps to be 30 just to show you how else it can work. And now uh, with it selected there's two ways I could blend these two lines that I have. I could click on these two top points. I should have them selected. That will blend between these two top points or command Z, I could blend between these two points which gives me a different option. And what's quite interesting then when I come in I can do some different maneuvers here. I could come in with my anchor point tool, give myself a Bezier curve, maybe one here. Again I can still change the colour of the lines make it yellow. I can move them around. I can double click, take myself inside the blend, move those around. There we go. So I can get some quite interesting results with the blend tool and you can either go here and use the blend tool in the tools panel or object blend depending on your preference and, and what you'd like to do. I'll just show you one other blend option you could do with shapes which looks quite interesting. So I'll hold down my shift key again to give myself a circle, make this black and a square on the other side. So last time I did the shapes I went up to object blend. This time I'm going to use the blend tool here and I'm going to click this anchor point and this anchor point on my square. And as you can see here, instead of having the steps in between, it's created some really interesting spinning kind of shapes. Now, using my direct selection tool, I'm going to change this black one here to orange. And you can see here, you just get some really interesting effects. Now, because I created the circle first and the orange uh, square second. The hierarchy is that the circle is on the bottom and the square is on top but I can actually change that over. So I'll just move this a bit closer 
uh, and I can uh, uh, right mouse button click arrange center the back and then you can see it just changes that slightly so have a bit of a play around with the blend tool it can do some really interesting things um, I'm just going to delete this for now so that we can have a bit of blank space for working on our project so what I'd like you to do next is with your type tool give yourself a text box type the word neat in capitals now I'd like to make just a nice um, chunky typeface We'll come up to 72 here. Now it also is important for me to tell you that the blend tool doesn't work on typography when it's uh, as a font. You need to outline your text. So there's two ways of doing that. I can right mouse button click create outlines. Alternatively with the word selected I can come up to type create outlines this way. Now I'm just going to make this quite a bit bigger. So as you can see, instead of typography that I can uh, type that I can update now, it's actually shapes. And I can see that because it's got the path around the outside in blue. Now for this project, I actually need to create three copies of the same layer. So over here on my layers panel, I'm going to drag this layer one onto my new layer two times to create three copies of the exact same layer. I'm going to switch off the top two, toggle the visibility on those and select my layer one so I know what I'm working on. I'd like to name this layer shadow. This is going to be the shadow of the type. So what I'm going to imagine is that there's a shadow which is being cast down to the left. Then I'll give my type some height and give it some extra shadows on the edges of the letters which we'll get onto. But right now, I'm going to create my first blend. I'd like to change the colour of this to a mid-grey and I'm going to hold down my option key and I know I'm going to copy and drag because it's got a black cursor with a white cursor underneath uh, and I'm going to drag this down to the bottom left. The, another way of doing that, I'm going to command Z, another way of doing that would be to command C to command copy, command V and then to move my other version of neat to where I want it to be. Now with both of these selected I'd like to come up to object, blend, blend options. This time instead of 30 steps I'd actually like to put in 100. The reason I'm putting in so many is because I want it to look like a seamless shape, like a shadow. So if I zoom in really close you would see the 100 steps of the word, so the 100 versions of neat, but back from here it will just look like a clean line. So okay, and back up to object, Blend, make. And as you can see now, I've got this beautiful shape that's coming out, which just gives a bit of depth to my type. It's going to lock this first blend that I've made and toggle the visibility on my next layer. This layer is going to be called height. Now I'd like to make this uh, bright orange. And again, I'm going to create a second blend. Uh, this time it will be up to the left. So holding down option I'm going to drag this second instance up to the left with both selected and because I already have my blend option set as a hundred steps I can just go straight to object blend make and you can see now here I've got a shadow blend and a height blend and I'm going to come in here later and put in some extra shadows just to give it a bit more depth uh, and I'm going to lock this layer now. So on my top layer, I'm going to toggle the visibility on here. You can see it looks a little bit odd because of where it was sitting. Uh, just the perspective's a bit wrong. So I'm going to select this top layer, rename it top. Um, I'd also like to change the color to a lighter orange. And I'm going to drag it up so it's in this top corner. Now I can't quite see what I'm doing. So I'd like to come in with my um, zoom tool and I'm going to come in just so I can make it exactly right. So with this selected I can butt it up right there excellent and I can zoom back out excellent okay so the last thing that I'd like to do is create another layer in between my height layer and my top layer to create some extra shadows just to give a little bit more interest so I'd like to lock my top layer and add a, create a new layer that will be in between my top and my height I'm going to add this in and say top shadows. Okay, 
Now with this selected and I'd like to make it a deeper red, I'm going to come in with my pen tool and add some extra shapes everywhere where I think there needs to be a little bit more shadow. So with it zoomed in makes it a little bit easier. Um, I'll show you the first one and then I'll speed up the video. Excellent. So I've got all my extra shadows on there and it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I would just like to extend this shadow at the bottom a little bit and because that still is a blend I can still manipulate that. So I'm going to click on this to toggle my lock top shadows, unlock my shadow at the bottom and actually double click on that blend so I can manipulate it a little bit. I'm going to drag it a little bit more. I think that just makes it a little bit more dramatic and I think I'll do a few more little things just to neaten up um, my neat. Excellent. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about the blend tool and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks. Bye.